the year is 2012. Whoop. While browsing YouTube, I happen upon a certain promotional short. And that short was none other than Meet the Spy. Gentlemen. Promoting Team Fortress 2. I fell in love, I mean, these were just so unique and full of character. So imagine my surprise when I found out they were made in one program. And that program is not only available publicly, but it's also free of charge. Source Filmmaker. My mind was racing. I mean, I could make anything with this. So I installed the program, opened it up, and pretty much did nothing. I did try, but I guess I just wasn't patient enough. Shortly after, I started learning 2D, and eventually uninstalled SFM. Fast forward to present day, and TF2 is seeing new traction. Somehow, that gets me thinking about Source Filmmaker again, and I think to myself, you know what, maybe I could give it a shot now. I know a bit of Blender, and that could help bridge the gap. Although, I am quite busy, but what if I add a time limit? What if I attempt to learn the software and make a full-fledged animation? All in the span of two weeks. Ow! Come on! That's what I thought initially, just keep watching the video. So on the 6th of August, exactly at 011, I officially started the clock. And then I went to bed. In the morning, I launched SFM. And before opening a tutorial, I messed around a bit, seeing what I can figure out by myself. And uh, yeah, I uh, open up a new session. Uh, couldn't really do anything, so I opened Meet the Heavy instead, and I did some stuff. Oh, no. Oh, now I see. Well, I guess created like a key for me here. The weapons guy. Oh. And this <laughs> is my way. Slowly she weighs 150 to the kilograms side. in front. And so I started with the official SFM tutorials. And these are pretty good. In fact, I seem to have already watched a few because I'm subscribed. The first 12 parts cover the basics, while part 13 is all about pose to pose. I followed along, stopping briefly after each one to get acquainted with some of the less familiar aspects. For starters, the SFM control is a little different. You move around like you're in a game, using WSD to fly around. You can use the Alt key with mouse buttons, like you would in other 3D programs, but it's not exactly the same. Once I got the hang of navigation, it was time to start recording. The first thing you learn is capturing gameplay, basically making a machinima. You can add movements and lip sync after the fact, but you can't retroactively change the way a character runs, for example, or interact with it in-engine. They're just sample data, kind of like a ghost on a track. I wasn't terribly interested in this technique, and what made it worse was this motion editor thing that I really did not want to associate with. Either way, I kept going, practicing each technique as diligently as I could, but raring to finally animate something. Things were going well, I was surprisingly out of schedule, and on the second day I completed the whole tutorial. Or at least the first 12 parts, I mean. But speaking of which... Armed with the newfound knowledge, I finally delved into pose to pose, and I was happy to find it was familiar ground, as these techniques are more or less common across all animation types. Anyway, I got to the final part, ready to do some real animating, and I found out it was a bouncing ball exercise. And now don't get me wrong, that is a perfectly logical choice for beginners, but as a somewhat experienced animator, I have had enough of balls. So I did something naughty. I skipped the last part of the tutorial and made my own animation. What's the matter? No bitches? This was a blast to make, and having animated 3D before, the first shot went pretty smoothly. For the following shot, I had the idea of Scout getting ragdoll, which is where I encountered the first actual problem. I was under the impression that you could do physics within SFM, but I ended up having to use a script that has this functionality. It does make sense, as I've mentioned before, none of the objects in SFM are actually there, they're just models in 3D software, not entities in engine, so I ended up launching a crate at Scout to simulate what I had in mind. And though it took a bit of sweating, I'm glad I went through with the physics, because it ended up being useful later on, despite the continued technical problems. At this point, I was feeling real good about this challenge. I was on day 3 and I already got a little clip done. 
It wasn't perfect, but still, maybe I could actually do it in a week. And so the decision was made. Before August 13th, 11, I would have to complete the entire animation and upload the video to YouTube, proving its authenticity. I later realized I should have done more to prove when I started as well, but what can you do? I guess you'll have to trust me. Right away, day 4 didn't go as planned. I spent almost the whole day trying to find a suitable clip or idea to animate. And when I did, unfortunately, I picked the wrong one. I wanted to take a crack at Mr. Green. I got everything set up for it. The room, the props, the whole shebang. My idea was to use the advanced scout to form his face, hide his body and attach his head and rig to the suit heavy. I don't know what I was thinking. This was obviously a mismatch and I couldn't get it to work. In addition to these technical difficulties, I also realized I'd need to learn blackjack and uh, animate multiple characters playing it. So, unfortunately, I had to abandon the clip. Being back where I started, I had to change my approach. Time was running out and I really needed something with a connection to all of this. Hey, what is going on everybody? Jerma here with the Team Fortress 2 gameplay commentary. It didn't take long to find the perfect clip. I was right back on track and the race began. Everything I've learned up to that point and more was put to the test. I had to learn on the fly. I even found out the motion editor is not rubbish, but actually extremely useful for editing motion. I had to parent teeth to cans of bonk because they didn't have their own collision boxes. I had to use VTF edit to change a texture on a TV so it could display a particular trailer. I even wrote a minuscule amount of code. All the while time was running out. And then, finally, it was over. At exactly 21.03, I finally upload the full video. How do you do an infomercial on a book The people just sit there and they talk about the book? And an infomercial for a game could be pretty damn funny. I mean, I, I, I could just picture like the black and white screen like we talked about before. It's some lady sitting there and she's playing Battlefield and it's really, really dumpy looking. It's like 2D old NES graphics on the screen. And there's a voiceover that comes on and says, has this ever happened to you? And the lady's like teeth just start falling out and she's like, oh, my fucking teeth. And then it cuts immediately to a bright, Nice colorful screen with big 3D graphics and she's sitting there so happy she smiles right in the camera. Ding! Her teeth are like nice and shiny. And a voiceover comes back on and just says, If you play Call of Duty, you'll never see this problem again. <laughs> that would be so that would be so stupid. What am I talking about? This is so what's the conclusion? Did I find my new thing? Will I be switching to SFM for good? Uh, probably not. It was fun, and I'm glad I finally crossed it off my bucket list, but I still prefer the flexibility of something like Blender. The biggest strength of Source Filmmaker is, without a doubt, its community. There are so many talented and hardworking creators, and without their contributions, SFM just wouldn't be the same. All things considered, it's a nice gateway to learning 3D. And while I'd still recommend starting with something more conventional, the ready-made possibilities of SFM cannot be understated. Not to mention, you can play around with actual game assets from Valve. You can see how things work, and that's really cool. I mean, what other program just allows you to do that without any experience? While SFM is showing its age a bit, the release of Half-Life Alex gave us Source 2 Filmmaker. And even though it added a bunch of modern features and improvements, you do need to buy the game to get it, which might feel a bit silly unless you own a VR headset. Also, it currently shares its workshop with Half-Life Alex, and adding items apparently isn't as easy as in the OG SFM, which takes away a lot of the original appeal, at least for me. Given a few years, we could get the full release of S2FM, and who knows, at some point, I might give it a try again. Hey, thanks for watching. This type of video is new to me, so I appreciate you gave it a chance. Also, thanks to my patrons. YouTube kind of hates animation, so your support means a lot. Anyway, here's some more videos, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.